Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This video is going to be doing part two for my Q&A for 2013. So as you can see, the toque is back. Hat. In Canada we call this a toque. So, just for you Americans. And yes, yeah, so a few people ask me about where I live, this kind of stuff. I can't tell you, stalker. I'm just kidding, but uh, I will just say I live in Canada. That's it. Okay, it's a big place. Actually, it's the biggest country in the world, geographically. So, in terms of size. So, yeah, that's that. I won't go into any, any more location stuff like that. I mean, and it's not for most of you, but there's some crazies out there on YouTube. Believe me, I've run into some really crazy freaking people. Uh, specifically with Jess's account. She's got some stalkers and stuff. It's uh, it's weird. Anyway, um, so we'll get back into the Q&A. Uh, I've got another uh, bunch of questions here that we can go ahead and get into for some fun. Um, and I was surprised, I'll say right off the bat, the amount of people that were, are telling me i gotta got to continue to play the Walking Dead game. So I'm going to try to get back into it. I really am. Um, there's, for some reason with me, video games like that, like adventure-type games, don't really stimulate me too much. They're kind of too... Uh, I don't know if it's too slow or too time-consuming or what it is, but I have trouble playing them now that I'm an adult. When I was younger and stuff, I had no problem, but um, nowadays I don't have a lot of time. You know, anytime I could put into my channel, I would. So um, other stuff like that kind of goes on the back burner as a result. But I'm going to try it again because then I can, you know, play the episodes, do reviews, so I can kind of do both. I can kind of work on my channel while I'm, you know, playing the game. And uh, and it is a good game from what I've played so far. I'm still, you know, only maybe a little bit away through the first uh, episode of the Walking Dead uh, Telltale game. So that's uh, for an update on that, anybody who's wondering with that. All right, first question is, uh, who was calling Rick on that phone after Lori died? So this is something that uh, came from the comic books originally. Uh, I liked a lot more how it was handled in the comic books and the TV series, at least so far, the way it's been handled. Um, essentially, it, the phone is just a, a manifestation of uh, Rick's sort of anxiety and uh, post-traumatic stress after what's happened to Lori and uh, and everything like that. Um, he uses it as an adapter uh, for himself to, to deal with the loss. So he essentially picks up this phone and he imagines that he's speaking to people, but there's no one actually there. At least as far as we know, there's no one there. And they didn't, they didn't, you know, come back to that. They kind of, they kind of blew through that, which is a lot of the, some of the problems I've had with season three is that they're taking these concepts in the comic books that were really done so well, and they're going through them too fast. And they're not really examining them and slowing it down and letting us appreciate them so that it's just like half an episode and then boom, it's done and we never see it again. So it's like they can say, well, yeah, it was in the comic book. We put it in the show. But it's like, yeah, you did. But I didn't feel anything. You know, I didn't feel anything for it. Maybe it's because we've already seen it in the comic book. Um, but I mean... I don't know. I just I didn't feel much for the phone thing. So anyway, uh, there was nobody on the phone. It was just Rick losing his mind. Uh, next question. Uh, when you're not working or doing videos, uh, what do you like to do? Well, um, I obviously I put in a lot of hours. I put in about 50 hours uh, between most of the time between my job 40, 42 or 43 hours a week. And then my channel about five to 10 hours a week, uh, except for some of the time I took a break during this uh, winter so far. Uh, just because I've been adjusting and doing some life, dealing with some life stuff. But um, when I'm not doing that for about 50 to 60 hours a week, um, most of the time I'm tired. So most of the time I just like to relax. Uh, I do like to work out. Uh, that's something that I, I definitely, before I had a channel, before I was doing this, I was way more into working out than I am now. Um, I was stronger too, quite a bit stronger. Uh, I've gotten a lot weaker since I've been doing YouTube. Uh, it's sad to say, but it's true. You know, when, when you're when you're benching and stuff, see the weights don't lie. I, I know exactly how strong I am at the time when I'm you know doing it because when I've been working out for a while and I've been taking shakes and all that kind of stuff, I can start to do more reps of the same uh, weight. And then I can move up and wait and add more weight. And then when you stop for a couple months, you have to take weight off and go back. So it's so hard because you feel like such a puss because you have to take off. You're like, okay, I was doing this before. Now I have to take this off and start again and go back. But it comes back faster than it did originally. Uh, for some reason, at least for me anyway, what I've seen, um, when you when you stop working and you go back at it, your body adjusts more easily than when you do it the first time. Uh, when you first start working out, uh, especially with heavy weights and things like that, it's uh, it's incredibly uh, strenuous on on everything your your joints, your body. It's just not used to it. The muscles 
uh, you get really, really um, like sore the day after. And while you're doing it, like during your, your uh, sets, you will get more sore. And then after you start doing whatever exercise you're doing um, for like a couple weeks or whatever, let's say once a week you do a certain muscle or group or twice a week, I like a three day split. So I'll do like, you know, let's say um, chest and tries one day, the next day I'll do like legs, like leg presses and maybe calves. And then the day after that, I'll do um, like biceps and mix in back, you know, back, do rows and stuff like that, uh, pulling for both your back and your biceps. Um, and then other exercises too, I'll mix in with those, but those are the core ones. And then I'll take a day or two days rest and I'll do that again. So that's a pretty simple way to do it. Uh, I'm not talking about professional, you know, training here. They've got some really crazy routines you can get into, but for me, a three day, uh, and then a day or two days off and then go back at it again, really gets good results. Uh, compound exercises are the best for people that don't have a lot of time and aren't, you know, trying to become bodybuilders or whatever. Plus, uh, I got out of that really quickly because um, you can't compete in bodybuilding unless you take steroids. It's that simple. You can't do it. Uh, shouldn't even try. Don't even bother. You know, if you're not willing to take steroids and you want to get into bodybuilding, don't bother. You know, people say, oh, they've got natural bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't even know what the testing is like in natural bodybuilding. And not, not only that, but they have pro hormones nowadays that you can take orally that are more like just as potent as actual juice. So that's something that that's a hobby uh, to answer your question. Working out is probably my biggest hobby I've had over my life because I've always liked to work out since I was in grade school. I'd like to uh, to work out. Uh, in addition to that, I, I do like to play video games quite a bit and collect uh, action figures, as you guys can see in the background. Some people have asked me to show my room off. I have so many videos. If you look back through my old videos of my figure collection in this channel and my first channel, which you can see in the sidebar to the bottom right on my channel. Um, I mean, I show off the whole thing. I've got a Gotham City display over here. I've got a bat cave I built over there. I've got a, a Aliens Hive that I created over there, which is really cool. I've got uh, a Walking Dead diorama, which is over there. A Danger Room for the X-Men, which is over there. Turtles, the Technodrome. I've got just so much nerdy, geeky, coolness stuff. Go back through my channel and watch if you guys want to see uh, that. So that's something I've really... And big into as well as figure collecting, but I've kind of throttled back on that because of the fact that uh, it's so expensive and the prices keep going up. They don't go down. They, they keep continuously every year uh, for figures. They go up higher and higher and higher. So that's another interest of mine is collecting uh, figures. And lastly, I'd say, you know, hanging out with friends, hanging out with my girlfriend and, you know, watching movies I like to do and playing video games. Uh, what video games do I play? I like strategy games, real-time strategy and MOBAs. So I play right now, I'm playing Warcraft 3, which is not a new game, it's an older game, but it's, to me, I think it's the best video game ever made. And I played it since it came out. Um, the thing about it is though, is it's not, it's not for everybody. It is such a complicated game that most people probably wouldn't like Warcraft 3. They'd probably want to play StarCraft or something like that. Uh, StarCraft is amazing too. StarCraft 2 also, is, it's like 2.0. It's basically, StarCraft 2 is StarCraft, just, you know, with a few additional changes. It's, it's like a graphics upgrade and an expansion pack for the original. That's really what it is. Uh, so I never really got into that too much. The reason why is because in StarCraft uh, 2, you have the real-time strategy element where you have your economy and you're building your units and you're trying to counter your, your uh, opponent and expand uh, your base and do all these different types of things. But uh, you don't have the heroes. You don't have experience. doesn't play a factor. Uh, and I really like in Warcraft 3 where you have heroes that as you fight, they become stronger. and They grow throughout the course of the game. That, to me, is a step forward in terms of real-time strategies. And to other games now when I play other real-time strategies that don't have that, I feel like we're going back. Even if the graphics are better, we're stepping back in the evolution of gaming to the point where it's like, okay, you have StarCraft and then WarCraft 3 hit, WarCraft 3 added in these elements, now you release StarCraft 2 and you take those elements away, I think you're you're receding. You're not you know going forward in terms of uh, gameplay. Uh, that's just my opinion, though. I know a lot of people love StarCraft, so I'm not bashing StarCraft. That's one of my favorite games ever, too. But my game that I like to play even to this day is WarCraft 3. Um, aside from that, I do like some fighting games. Um, Dota is good, Defense of the Ancients, and uh, Heroes of New Earth. A lot of people play League of Legends. Uh, they're all basically the same. Any of them is good. Um, but in terms of those, I prefer Heroes of New Earth because the graphics are the best out of all of those, and it's really fast-paced. 
Um, but yeah, right now I'm playing uh, Warcraft 3, so that's basically it. Um, let's see, next one. I have a video suggestion. How will the comics story be divided up in future seasons of the TV show? Well, it depends who the showrunner is. I mean, if, if uh, Glenn Mazar was still here, we'd probably be through the comic book in another two seasons with the way he was doing things. Um, if they slow down and do it properly, I think they could at least get out of the 106 issues um, at this point, they could probably at least get eight seven or eight or nine seasons of The Walking Dead before they run out of material and they have to start creating more. But that depends also how many episodes they're going to do because 16 episodes a season, they could go through that as we've seen this season really quickly unless they add things in. They have to add things in and change the storyline a bit. I like to see them go to different areas instead of just going down the path of the comic book in terms of uh, location like the prison and then what they do after that. don't want to spoil anything in the comic book, but I'd like to see them do totally different stuff, you know, go to a new location that we that they weren't at in the comic book series. Show us some different things like that. I think it would be really cool. Uh, next question. Do you think we will ever see Jeff in the comic book series? Uh, Rick's brother he's referring to as, as Jeff. I don't think it's important, uh, and I don't think it would be realistic for us to just run into him just out of nowhere. Um, the Walking Dead TV series tends to do stuff like that, but in terms of the comic book, it's usually pretty realistic with things like that. Uh, so I'd say probably not, in my opinion, no. Another person asked me where I live. Like I said, Canada. That's as uh, specific as I'm going to get it. Um, next question is uh, not a very good one. I'm going to skip it. Um, which do you prefer, the Walking Dead comic or TV series? And please give reasons why. Well, this is one I have done videos about in the past, and I could do more videos, or, uh, like a video just talking about it. Maybe I will, um, but... It's hard to say. I mean, in terms of if you want to consider what point they're up to, like if you want to say, okay, which was better, the Walking Dead series up to the, the part they're at at the prison in the comic book and the TV series, if you want to compare those parts, I'd probably prefer the TV series. Um, but if you want to compare them as a whole, like where we're at right now in the TV show and where we're at in the comic book, the comic book's so much further, so I'd probably have to pick the comic book if you're talking overall. But eventually the TV series will catch up or get closer, and I'll probably go back to the TV series. But I kind of go back and forth in my mind about which one I like better and which one. Because the comic book's my favorite comic book ever, TV series my favorite TV series ever. Um, I like each for different reasons, but in terms of uh, if only one could exist... As a fan, I would probably pick the comic book because it's so much further in the story. When the TV series gets further or gets closer, it'll switch to the TV series. So I hope that answered it. But if you want to talk the part that they're at right now, like the comic book series from beginning up to the prison uh, sequence that we're at in the TV show, and same with the TV show, I'd pick the TV show. So Because I think it, it kind of fleshes out the characters and tells the story better. Especially in particular with Shane. In the comic book series, he didn't get a lot of time and it was really uh, done very well in the TV series. Um, okay, next question. Uh, hey Trev, which is your favorite and least favorite celebrity? And he says, for me, my least favorite would have to be Kanye West. Can't stand him. Oh man, that's a good question. Okay, so this will be the last question for this Q&A and then I'll do another one uh, after this one uh, and probably put it out a week later, two weeks later or something. Okay, my favorite celebrity. Um, first of all, I want to say I don't adhere to the social norm of people looking up to celebrities. Uh, I don't partic I don't usually look up to um, celebrities and think that, like, I don't think they're better than anybody else out there. They just made different choices. Maybe they're talented at something. Maybe they met the right person. Uh, maybe they got lucky. Um, but in terms of me, uh, well, this year and last year, I'd have to say it'd be Psy. Um, Gangnam Style. Yeah, Psy, for sure. Uh, and you'd probably be like, what? Psy? What the hell? I hate him. I'm tired of him. Well, um, here's why I want it. Here's why I, I, I think Psy is, is just um, the greatest uh, celebrity uh, of last year, at least in the last couple of years, is because uh, Gangnam Style, the music video, he created something that transcends language, okay? So even though you have people that don't understand uh, the language and most of the words in the song, like there's only a little bit, of, there's only a few parts that are in English in the whole song. Um, he created something that broke boundaries, okay? That creatively is what's referred to in art as avant-garde or new, novel, uh, artistically novel. So you know how you have like a, let's say you have a new invention of a computer thing or an iPad or something like this. 
Um, that would be Novell as it maybe never been done before. Let's say the first tablet that came out, which was actually, I think, a Microsoft tablet, um, <laughs> which is funny, but it, I, I'm pretty sure it was, or made by somebody like that. Um, so you have that, and that's completely new. You know uh, What Psy did was completely new. When he released Gangnam Style, um, there have been like you know dances to to songs for obviously uh, in, one in the last few years was uh, Soldier Boy. He had one, um, and you know that like rap stuff. Uh, what else is there? There's been a lot in the past too. Like Achy Breaky Heart had a dance for it, and and that whole idea works really well. But he is the first person to kind of take that, take that sort of pop style dance, put it all into one with a good song, okay, and the best video ever created and essentially package that all into one create that much value and just put it out there and the next thing you know boom it goes crazy and everybody in the world knows what it is and it gets like over a billion views on YouTube and is the uh, the most watched video in history um, that to me is inspiring that to me is genius whether you like the song or not you have to and you might find it annoying because so many people know about this point of talking about it and it's old at this point uh, you still have to respect that creative genius behind that idea. So for that, for me, Psy and all the entourage, because I'm pretty sure he didn't come up with the idea for the horse dance, you know, but everybody who was involved with that, um, you know, that that to me is something that uh, that I would I would aspire to one day be able to create something of that kind of value in the market. That is a, that is really an amazing accomplishment for somebody like him to be able to do to break barriers like that. So people in the states. In Canada and all over the world know about it when it's not even in their language. Never been done before and, and might not be done again. Uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. So he's probably my favorite celebrity of the last few years. Uh, growing up and stuff, I mean, there's there's lots of different uh, celebrities that uh, you know, growing up that you probably would have liked. Um, but for now, I think I'll leave it at that just for time's sake. I could go into some more. Uh, so the second part of the question, my least favorite celebrity would have to be Justin Bieber. It would have to be Justin Bieber. I hate Justin Bieber. Uh, I really do. And it's not, I don't hate him personally. I don't hate because he just, he's a, he's a marketing tool. That's all he is. He's a tool to the umpteenth degree. You know, the only thing he does is uh, perform and, you know, do what his handlers tell him to do. Uh, and he's sold like a product, essentially. Uh, you have marketing out there just all over the damn place, on the internet even, and everywhere for him. And, um, you know, he's a product. He's a product just like a Nike shoe or anything like that. But the reason why I hate him so much is because of how he's been able to stay relevant. You know, I figured his 15 seconds of fame were over years ago. But the thing is, is that the internet now has changed that. Whereas in the past, you'd have like Backstreet Boys, and a few years after they come out, three or four or five years, they're basically non existent. I mean, they'll still come back here and there, but they're basically gone. Now you have Twitter, you have YouTube, you have the internet, and you have these companies that are even, even more wealthy and powerful than they used to be, like Interscope and stuff like that. And um, they can just keep pumping stuff out all the time. And to, I mean, he. I don't think he writes any of his own songs. I don't think he, you know, <laughs> doesn't he just perform? Isn't that basically all he does? I'm not saying he doesn't have any kind of talent, but it's kind of a, it's kind of annoying. Also, to add to that list is uh, Rihanna. Uh, she has also become a product, and it's really annoying. I'm pretty sure she doesn't write her own music either. Uh, and also Nicki Minaj. She's driving me up the wall every time I turn on the radio. There there isn't one song, uh, pop song that she's not in. That's on the radio freaking here. It, it drives me nuts. So actually, uh, I might have to put her above uh, JB as uh, Nicki Minaj. She, she's she's probably my least favorite because she's just gutter trash and, and I can't stand I can't stand what she does. I, I don't like her music. So I don't understand how she became so popular. I That type of music does not appeal to me. If you want to call it music, it's more like talking to music, but uh, and not all rap is. I'm not saying that's what you know rap is, but her, she's just she's trash. I don't like her at all. Um, and she's got no man. She's got no class either. She just she's she's classless. She's just a dirt dirt bag. All there is, <laughs> I just trashed her pretty bad. Uh, yeah. So her, she'd probably be the most. Uh, her and Justin Bieber. Uh, let's see. Do I have time for one more? Um, uh. 
I think I'll probably, okay, one last one. Uh, one person asked me, uh, will I do any more Naruto reviews? Well, I, yeah, I will, but I'm not going to commit to it and say it's something I'm going to do every week. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to be doing Naruto uh, reviews every manga issue like a lot of people do. There's a lot of people on YouTube that do that, a lot of reviewers and stuff. And the reason why is because I don't think it justifies it. You know, not every manga issue is good enough for me to do a review on it. Like, most of them, I could probably talk about them in like five seconds, you know. So, and, and that's that's really it. Or, or one minute and you'd be done. And I don't like to do one minute videos generally. I like to do good videos that are at least five or ten minutes. And I hope people appreciate that. So, that's that. I'll do another part probably next week or something like that. And, um... Thanks. Thank you all you guys for watching and uh, thank you for your questions. Please feel free to leave more below and maybe I'll do this like a weekly type thing or something like that if people like it. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev. Same peace.